I wanted to take the time and and share something I, I, I God put in my heart yesterday when I was reading Proverbs. Um, it's Proverbs chapter eight. It won't take too long, but just wanted to. I'm gonna read Proverbs eight, and then I found a parallel in. Well, not I found. God showed me that there's a parallel between that and John chapter 1. So I'm going to start. Does not wisdom cry out and understanding lift up her voice? She takes her stand on top of the high hill, beside the way where the paths meet. She cries out by the gates at the entry of the city. At the entrance of the doors, to you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. O you simple ones, understand prudence, and you fools, be of an understanding heart. Listen, for I will speak of excellent things, and from the opening of my lips will come right things. For my mouth will speak truth, wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are with righteousness, nothing crooked or perverse is in them. They are all plain to him who understands, and right to those who find knowledge. Receive my instruction, and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things one may desire cannot be compared with them. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance and the evil way, and the perverse mouth I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding, I have strength. By me, kings reign, and rulers decree justice. By me, princes rule, and nobles, all the judges of the earth. I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently will find me. Riches and honor are with me, enduring riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yes, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I traverse the way of righteousness in the midst of the path of justice that it may cause those who love me to inherit wealth, that I may fill their treasuries. The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his will. Before his works of old, I have been established from everlasting. From the beginning, before there was ever an earth, when there were no depths, I was brought forth, when there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills I was brought forth, while as yet he had not made the earth or the fields or the primal dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he established the clouds, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limits, so that the waters would not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him as a master craftsman. And I was to daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and my delight was with the sons of men. Now therefore listen to me, my children, for blessed are those who keep my ways, hear instruction and be wise, and do not disdain, disdain it. Blessed the man is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoever finds me finds life, and obtains favor from the Lord. But he who sins against me wrongs his own soul. All those who love, hate me love death. Now this is, that was Proverbs 8. Now this is John chapter 1. I won't be reading the whole thing, but I just wanted to share the part that I thought was interesting. This is in the New Testament, many years after Proverbs. All right. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. And there was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for witness, to bear witness of the light, that all through him might believe. He was not the light, but he was sent to bear witness of, the, of that light. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world, world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received 
him. To them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness of him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father. He has declared him. To, that to me is... There's so much more in here that shows when Christ was there at the beginning and how when he came to the earth and walked this earth that that solidifies him as the Son of God. Now this is not for me to talk about like proving that Jesus was the Son of God. This is something that I know and I know that there are people that don't believe. But I just wanted to take the time and share that in this so many years before you see how Jesus was there from the beginning and he the fact that he was there I mean I, I don't know I, I'm at a loss of words um, right now uh, I think maybe because I'm trying to make this something more than maybe I'm going off my own understanding but I just wanted to take the time and share that the parallels to show that Jesus he was he is the physical embodiment of God. He was there at the beginning. He is the Word that became flesh. He walked this earth. He defeated death. And He died on that cross so that we could have salvation in Him. And, and through Him, we have the Holy Spirit of God. And that, to me, I mean, when you accept Christ into your life, and you are led by the Holy Spirit, you'll see a change in your life. You'll see the things of the world that you're going to lose interest in. There are things that you will not find pleasing. Or, and you will, God will change you from within. I know that happened with me, and I'm on a journey right now, and, and I'm thankful for that, that journey that I'm on because the life that I was living before was, you know, not everybody knows how each and everybody lives their life. Let's just put it that way. But I just know that I'm, I'm living now, I have much more of a purpose. I have a family that I'm thankful for, and I know that is one of the purposes I have in my life, to, to be here for my family. And I know God has something in store for me, something greater. And the enemy will always try to attack those that are powerful to God, powerful to His artillery. So. If, you know, for believers out there, I pray that you you remain steadfast in the Lord. And keep reading His Word. You know, keep keep living. You know, keep wanting to to get closer to God. You know, I remind myself that um, that's the only thing I can do. I don't do it every day, and I realize I feel so disconnected when when that happens. When I'm not in it all every time. It, it, it's very important that you read His Word and you pray and ask God to show you to show to show you what He wants you to see, so that when you you go about your life, you're not just living for yourself. We're not meant to live on this earth for ourselves. You know, we are meant to be dependent on God and interdependent among one another. God put us here to to do His will, to love Him. And to worship Him, and to show the world what He can do for our, for our lives, and show show the world that we don't have to live for this world because this world is temporary. The things in this world are temporary. The things in this world don't last. They are fleeting. The pleasures of this world they just it, it's it's short. It, it's I'm not saying that you know you drop everything. If God called you to do that, that's that's between you and God. But just know that living for the things of this world are not going to bring you happiness. Living for the things in this world are just going to always want you to, to th you're always going to be hungry for more. 
and you're never going to be satisfied. But Jesus, with Jesus Christ in your life, you will be satisfied. You will, you keep clinging to Him. You will see that you will need nothing more. You will see how God will will encourage you to always to 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 not be complacent in life. You will always want to grow, but you realize that that you'll still be satisfied for the things that you have. And not want to gain just material things, or not, or gain wealth, or gain status, you know, or gain the love of others. You'll realize that the more that you lean on Him, that you will have, you will not need those things, and that you will keep looking to want to build your life for God, and to show the world what God can do in your life. I think that's what I mean. I think I know that's what we're called to do, you know, to be the light in Jesus Christ. Um, this video kind of went a little more than I thought it would, but I just wanted to share that the more that you read, I mean, just in that, in chapter 9, it, it says, in chapter 8, sorry, and those who seek me diligently will find me. I mean, God gave us, he gave, he gave us the things that we need, his words, and we pray to him, you reach, you call out to him, he will, he will call, he will come on to you, and, I mean, that's, I guess that's all I can say, I just wanted to take the time to share this, um, have a blessed night.